Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how much fuel does an RC jet engine use for, of course, a radio controlled airplane. Now, the way that we're going to do this is we're gonna break it down into two different components. We're gonna first look at specifications and what that means for a jet engine. Then we're gonna look at exactly how much the jet engine that is used in this particular shot right here uses over the course of about a month worth of flying. So let's get started and talk about the actual specifications. So this engine here is known as a 100 Newton engine, which is essentially the amount of static thrust that this can generate. And the specification for this particular engine says it's going to burn about one liter of fuel for every three minutes. Now we can take a look at other engines of a bigger size as well as a smaller size. And you can also do the same by taking a look at your favorite jet engine manufacturer and understand what kind of fuel burn rates they have. And generally speaking, the burn rates that you're gonna get is based off of pretty much full stick. That means full throttle and it's gonna give you an amount in terms of the weight or a mass, a kilogram value, or it's gonna give you in terms of liters. One thing you might need to know here is a conversion between kilograms or grams to liters, and it's 800 grams or 0.8 kilograms is equal to one liter of fuel. If we look at other spec sheets there, here's values that you can see. For a 180 Newton turbine, you can see how much fuel this thing burns. And for something as crazy as like 300 size turbine, you can see exactly how much that burns. Now flipping things all the way to the lower end of the scale, something like a 45 Newton jet engine is going to burn this amount here, which is a lot less than even the 100 Newton that I showed earlier in the video. What I want to do now is look more at an actual practical point of view, because this is now looking at a flight and we know the amount of flight minutes that we ended up achieving. We know how much that we ended up burning in terms of liters. And we also know how much money all of this costs. So we can boil it right down to a cost amount. Now the duration of all the flights, uh, as I may have said near the beginning of this video, is is about a month worth of flights. And over a course of about a month, it's just over a month, it was 20 flights that were made. And if we also look over these 20 flights, how much fuel was actually purchased, it was about 45 liters worth of fuel that went into these 20 flights. Now we can break it down and see exactly how much fuel each one of these flights burns on average. And if you average that out, it works out to just over about two liters of fuel burned for every flight that we made. Now there's a couple of things to look into here because we know this engine burns according to the specification. If you're using full throttle, you're going to see one liter burn for every three minutes. However, our flight was about five minutes in total. And one thing that I do with my radio setup, and I would highly suggest others do, it's the best way that I've found that works well for me, and I, you might like this way as well to use it for yourself. I start my timer, so it starts counting down from the minutes that I set when I flip the gear switch. As soon as I pick the gears up, I have the timer set on that specific switch, yeah. and my time now starts to count down and buzzes at the zero marks. When we look at specifically the time that I'm up in the air, that works out to be about five minutes of flight time. Now, of course, I'm trying to land somewhere around that zero mark. It might be a little bit more, but I can assure you the last bunch of that flight is gonna be close to idle, if not all the way at idle for the most part. And then, of course, there's a couple things that happen at the end of the flight, as well as the beginning of the flight. And the thing that happens at the end of the flight, of course, is that we take the plane, we taxi it back uh, over to our taxiway, and we park it, and and then we shut it down. So there is some fuel that's being burned in that process that goes above and beyond that five minute mark. And then before the flight, we have of course our startup. Our startup burns a bunch of fuel as well as our run up. Some cases we do a run up the first flight of every day. It's a good idea to always do this. I know I'm sometimes a little hesitant because it is quite loud. You gotta get the earmuffs out or it's at least good practice to do so, but it's also good practice to do this at the beginning of every flight so that your engine and ECU know exactly how much fuel to pump into that engine when you are at 100% throttle and getting 100% RPM out of the engine. Once we have that calibration point set, then we taxi the plane over to where we're gonna take off, and from there we can go ahead and 
you know, get the plane up in the air. And that's when our timer officially starts on the radio and counts down from five minutes. In actuality, when looking at all of what's going on, the engine is probably running for about eight minutes or so in total time. In some cases, it might be seven minutes or nine minutes, but on average, it's probably around the, the eight minute mark for every flight that we do where only five of those minutes are actually in the air. So it's a good thing to know and understand the fuel that we're burning being just over two liters actually you know, accounts for full throttle that we're doing in flight, but it also counts for a lot of idle time that we're doing when we're getting the plane out to the start line and when we're taking that plane back into the taxiway to park it. Now let's talk about the cost. And to understand the cost, you have to also understand how I get the fuel here. I am located in Canada and in Canada, we have a store called Canadian Tire. Now I know that there's must be a few of you here who are watching from other countries that know of Canadian Tire. And if you do, let me know in the comments section what is the similar store that you have in your country that would be very similar to the Canadian Tire that we have here in Canada. Canadian Tire is a store that I love to go in and check everything out and luckily for me they also sell kerosene so not only can I go in there and see what kind of sales they got going on but I get to pick up a 10 liter jug of kerosene so that I can burn that in my radio controlled jet. That 10 liter jug of kerosene costs about four dollars per liter it is about $34.99 in store plus tax it works out just shy of $40 when you do the math four and a half jugs were purchased and that runs for those 20 flights at a total cost of the four and a half multiplied by the $40 per jug. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video in terms of how much fuel these engines actually burn. As always, like the video if you like RC turbines and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one.